The earth consists of two kinds of creatures. Those that were born to be endurance runners and those that were not. Fortunately, we were given the gift to travel long distances by foot. Certain aspects of our anatomy help illustrate this point. These include having a sturdy Achilles tendon, an absence of body hair, and bipedal movement. An average runner may ask themselves, why is this important? What role does science play in the art of training and my running performance? Well, there are several reasons why this level of analysis is important. First of all, your personal unique gait has both good and bad characteristics that reveal your best racing distance, your slow twitch to fast twitch muscle fiber ratio, and what types of training sessions will suit you best. Shoe selection. Not all shoes are created equal. And more importantly, your personal amount of pronation must also be taken into account when trying to find a shoe that fits your foot the best and caters to your specific needs. Injury prevention. Injuries from metatarsal stress fractures, plantar fasciitis, IT band syndrome, and patella tendonitis. Seeing your biomechanics in action will reveal which types of injuries you are prone to. Yes, uh, here we have our first training subject. It's an adult male, he's uh, 6 foot 1, 168 pounds. He's running at a velocity of about 3 or 4 marathon pace. His race pace for the distance it's 8.3 miles per hour. And here we see in the analysis that he's got a slight bow at the knee and the left leg joint, uh, slightly bow legged. Uh, it's less than ideal tibial angle with the horizontal plane that he's running on. And in the right foot, we see a slight outward splay, which uh, most likely is the result of hip muscle imbalances and a slightly excessive pelvic tilt, so he has a little bit of a stabilization issue there. Uh, the side view reveals that he is overstriding slightly. It's a very uh, common issue with runners, uh, especially towards the latter stages of a race when fatigue starts to set in. Uh, applying basic physics, you do obviously want the forefoot to be striking the running surface first, uh, more directly under the center of gravity. Yes, uh, here's our second training subject. He's an adult male, 5'11", 152 pounds, uh, 221 marathoner. Uh, the treadmill he is running at approximately 11.3 miles per hour. It's a uh, marathon race pace. Uh, as you can see from the rear view, his foot slightly crosses the midsection of his body, uh, also revealing some hip mobility issues, uh, hip muscle imbalances. Uh, from the side view, we see that he has a slight extension over stride, but it is not as not as bad as uh, subject one's. Uh, most importantly noted uh, from the side view is the fact that his tibia and femur uh, producing a relatively low angle. Uh, he's almost squatting down, his hips are low, he's riding his hips very low. This could be the result of a longer femur than the characteristics of many marathon runners, but it is also known as the marathon shuffle stride. 